Imagine a machine that consumes the power of an entire city, but houses no people. From the outside, it's a silent, sprawling complex. But inside, it's not one building. It's four factories, locked in a delicate dance. And if a single one fails, the entire machine dies. Six months ago, this site was an abandoned factory shell. Today, it is a thinking machine called Colossus II. This isn't just another data center. It's one of the first true AI Geiger factories. Sprawling across a massive campus, it's a system designed to house nearly 1 million GPUs, all drawing from a power envelope peaking near 1.2 gigawatt. This scale of computing is so vast, it's beginning to reshape our energy systems and even geopolitics. Colossus II isn't a building full of servers. It's four distinct factories, power, cooling, fabric and compute, all operating as a single living machine. The titans of this new era are Amazon, Microsoft, OpenAI, Meta, and XAI. The driving force is a relentless law of AI progress. Each new generation of models demands roughly 10 times more computational power. The consequence is that hyperscale companies can no longer just operate data centers. They must now secure and even build their own power infrastructure to stay in the game. The precedent was set with Colossus One, a megasite that went from an empty shell to a fully operational campus in just 122 days, deploying 100,000 NVIDIA GPUs in a record 19 days. This breakneck speed has become the new standard in a global arms race for AI dominance. The first and most fundamental factory is power. The challenge is delivering and stabilizing gigawatt-class power to a single campus. When scouting a location, the builders found that a major city like Memphis, Tennessee, could only spare about 50 megawatts. The requirement was nearly 1 200 megawatts. The solution was found across the state line in South Haven, Mississippi, on the footprint of a retired Duke Energy gas plant where the crucial pipelines and grid connections were still intact. The builders acquired the site, importing seven massive containerized gas turbines from Europe. Reassembled on site, they brought 460 megawatts of dedicated power online within months. But generation is only half the problem. The other is stability. The latest server racks can draw 130 kilowatts each, with millisecond-scale power surges from the GPUs that risk causing a voltage sag, crashing the entire facility. To prevent this, the power is buffered. The grid and on-site generators feed a field of 168 Tesla megapacks. These massive batteries smooth out the current, feeding clean, predictable voltage to the racks. This layered defense against crashes is non-negotiable, and the power infrastructure alone can account for 20% of a project is multi-billion dollar budget before a single server is installed. This reality has shifted the primary bottleneck in AI from silicon to energy. Access to stable gigawatt-scale power has become the new competitive moat. We see this across the industry. Microsoft is working to revive parts of the Three Mile Island nuclear facility to generate 850 megawatts of clean energy for AI. Google is funding multiple next-generation nuclear projects. Just a decade ago, a big data center used a few tens of megawatts. Today the demand is for gigawatts, and hyperscalers are on a path to control more power generation capacity than some small nations. The second factory is dedicated to fighting physics. When a gigawatt of power is pushed into a building, a gigawatt of heat must be pulled out. While a tiny fraction, perhaps 15 megawatts, can be recovered for reuse, nearly all of it must be continuously removed. Failure is not an option. If the cooling systems go down for even two minutes, the chips begin to throttle, jobs crash, and permanent hardware damage follows. The industry learned this the hard way. A meta AI data center was reportedly demolished mid-construction because its air cooling design was simply not viable for the heat density of next generation AI accelerators. At Colossus 2, the solution is a multi-stage liquid pipeline. It starts with cold plates mounted directly on the GPUs and CPUs. Liquid flows through these plates, exits the server racks at the 45 degree centigrade, 113 degree Fahrenheit, and transfers its heat into a larger, building-wide chilled water network. This water is then pumped to a field of 119 massive air-cooled chillers that strip 5 to 7 deg centigrade from the water on each pass before sending it back to the cold side. 
This entire thermal factory accounts for around 15% of the project is total capital expenditure. Billions of dollars spent just to stay cool. This level of cooling creates another immense challenge, water. Mega sites using traditional evaporative cooling can consume millions of gallons a day, putting a severe strain on local aquifers. To avoid this, Colossus II includes its own water factory. An on-site ceramic membrane bioreactor takes in municipal wastewater and recycles it, creating a closed-loop supply of up to 13 million gallons of ultra-pure water per day for the cooling system. This solution means the campus does not drain local freshwater resources. It actually improves the local water balance by cleaning and reusing what would otherwise be discarded. The third factory is the fabric. Its job is to make more than half a million individual GPUs act like a single coherent processor. Inside each server rack, 72 GPUs are woven together with NVIDIA's NVIDIA Link, creating computational islands that function as one giant GPU. To connect the thousands of racks, a specialized network called NVIDIA Spectrum X Ethernet is used. It provides 400 gigabits per second of bandwidth to each connection point, allowing a single server to communicate with an aggregate bandwidth of 3.6 terabits per second. Sophisticated congestion control algorithms are critical to maintaining over 90% network throughput at this massive scale. Timing is everything. In training an AI model, if some GPUs deliver their calculations even microseconds late, their updates are stale, and the efficiency of the entire multi-billion dollar system can drop by as much as 50%. The fabric prevents this with technologies like co-packaged optics, which reduce signal loss and latency, and Bluefield DPUs, dedicated processors that offload network, storage and security tasks, freeing up the GPUs to do what they do best, math. The fourth and final factory is the compute itself, the pyramid of silicon at the heart of the machine. The initial fleet consists of around 200,000 hopper generation GPUs, this is already being expanded with 350,000 next-generation NVIDIA Blackwell chips. Each of these devices is capable of over 20 petaflops of AI class performance. The cluster S target is to deliver 50 exaflops at launch, a figure roughly seven times more powerful than the top 10 supercomputers in the world combined. Orchestrating this symphony of silicon are fleets of AMD EPKey and Intel Xeon CPUs. Terabytes per second of high bandwidth memory from SK Hynix feed the chips, while petabytes of solid state drives ensure training data can be read without interruption. The ultimate goal is to scale this architecture to 1 million GPUs operating as a single machine. This approach, integrating the best available components at extreme speed, stands in contrast to moonshot projects like Tesla's Dojo Supercomputer, which tried to build a full custom stack from scratch and was ultimately discontinued. What does a machine like this actually do? It trains the largest models from labs like XAI, including the Grok family. It develops next-generation autonomy for vehicles and powers the training for humanoid robots like Optimus. The guiding principle is simple. The lab with the most usable compute learns the fastest and sets the pace for the entire industry. The budget reality of this $20 billion project is stark. The largest cost is the silicon. The second largest is power. Every other system, cooling, water, networking, is a life support factory built for the singular purpose of keeping the compute alive and productive. And it must all come online in record time, going from an empty shell to a thinking machine in about six months, compared to the 16 plus months of a typical data center build. Colossus 2 is not alone. The Switch Citadel in Nevada is a 650 megawatt campus planned for 250,000 GPUs. And OpenAI, in partnership with Microsoft, is reportedly planning Stargate, a multi-site 10 gigawatt program with the first gigawatt scale campus slated for Abilene, Texas by 2026. Hundreds of these AI campuses are in the pipeline across the USA. China and Europe as hyperscalers now command more power generation capacity than entire countries. This raises a critical societal question. Who gets the megawatts, people or machines? Access to energy has become synonymous with digital power. The nations with abundant, clean and stable electricity 
will set the pace for the future of AI. But this race comes with risks. Severe strain on public power grids, conflicts over water, and a dangerous concentration of compute power in the hands of a few corporations. Mitigations are being engineered alongside the data centers themselves. Solutions include recycled water systems, recovering heat for district energy, securing clean power purchase agreements, and siting facilities near existing energy infrastructure. But balancing progress with public benefit requires transparency, strong safety practices, and deliberate governance. Colossus 2 is more than just the world's largest AI data center. It is a demonstration of a new template for building intelligence. It is a machine made of four distinct factories, power, cooling, fabric, and compute, all working in perfect unison. If one leg of this chair collapses, the whole system fails. But when they are coordinated, an inert concrete shell becomes a living machine for generating ideas. As these AI gigafactories multiply across the globe, the line between a technology firm, a power utility, and a nation-state will continue to blur. The final outcome of this revolution, whether it leads to abundance or scarcity, depends entirely on how wisely this unprecedented new power is built, managed, and used. The final outcome of this revolution, whether it leads to abundance or scarcity, depends entirely on how wisely this unprecedented new power is built, managed, and used. But who will control them? Governments, corporations, or algorithms themselves? If you want to understand where this revolution is really heading, subscribe to Quantum Silk Route, hit that like button, and help us keep decoding the hidden side of technology. The next chapter begins soon.